Hi everyone. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. So we are trying new technology. We'll see how it goes. Um, so we thought we would talk to you about chaos. So it's been summer and lots of people traveling and and are you saying that's our life? It's been our life, yes. It's been a little crazy around here. When you have children and grandchildren, chaos rules the day. And some of you are seeing the plastic behind us. I posted photos of the outhouse in our front yard. Um, yes, it's been quite interesting around our house. Yeah, I was inviting people over. I said, the house looks great. He didn't even notice. Okay, so my husband's inviting people over for dinner. I posted some photos on Facebook. I'm like... Did you happen to notice the dumpster and the outhouse sitting in the front yard? He's like, no, nope, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, I think we need to come up with a new plan. So, um, but we, we get lots of people writing in and saying, you know, they're, they're really struggling with their plan because they've been traveling, because it's summer, because they've got kids, because it's Christmas, Thanksgiving. I mean, all year long, right? There's some reason that there's chaos because you're, Family I mean, there's members always are sick. a reason not to do the right thing. Right. And right now, we get it. There's a ton of chaos around here. And um, we just want to let you know that we, we're we not immune to this. We understand. There's like a, like a just a lot going on in our lives as well. We travel a lot. And, um, you know, we have to find a way to be able to do this, to be able to um, find some sort of balance and maintain our program as well in the middle of all of this chaos. So... So what do you do? Um, I don't know, for me, the first thing I have to do is I like to plan for chaos. So like for real planning, like I have like this whole thing I do. Like, so like, I mean, first of all, let's mention the people in Texas. Um, so it's been sort of horrible. Yeah, it's, you can't plan for natural for everything, disasters. Right? Well, you, you can. Do the best you can. You well, can, but then yes, you can't control it. You can't control what's going to happen. So I'm always planning for some sort of disaster. Um, so I feel terrible. It's like a tragedy and there's, you know, puts things in perspective a little bit, you know? Well, and it's not the first time that area has been, uh, attacked by a hurricane and right. flooding. Uh, so our prayers are with them. Uh, many people end up experiencing symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Rightfully from so. Flashbacks, right. nightmares, uh, there's a really simple technique that can really help, so don't block the feelings, but when you feel them, do alternate hemisphere tapping. Uh, so one side, then the other, one side, then the oh, other, one side, then the other. It's uh, used in a technique called EMDR that we've studied and used at Amen Clinics uh, for many years. Make sure you get support, don't isolate, and don't let that be your excuse to drink more, to eat lousy food. To hurt food, yourself. Uh, to not exercise. I mean, that's actually a reason to become even more serious uh, about brain health. Right. And so we've got this, you know, sort of chaotic environment where we're at, and we travel a lot on top of that. And so we had to come up with a plan. Like, so um, it's not as easy to sort of stay on track, but that doesn't mean we're not going to stay on track. It doesn't mean we're not going to take care of ourselves. So we had a plan for how to take care of ourselves during this process. And, um, you know, one of the things we do is we just make it a priority that we're going to eat healthy. We also make it a priority that we're going to exercise and support ourselves in, in that way. And when you're focused on it, it's easier to do. For me, one of the things I do... Can I say one thing? Uh, can I stop you? I love you. Go ahead. So whenever there's chaos or you travel or just life in general, plan for stuff to go wrong. Right. So when something goes wrong, you don't have to be irritated or upset. You just need to know that's normal. It's normal for things not to I, work out. I have out. to say something and really so funny. So I, I like when we go to Europe or something yeah. like that. The Disney I'm Cruise. like 10 different... <laughs> You know, it's not until the 11th time something doesn't go right that I start to get irritated because I just expect things aren't going to go I, the way I have to think. tell. So we went on a Disney cruise, and he thought I hated him. So I, I know I can never take him on another Disney cruise. Um, <laughs> I actually begged her at the first stop. I said, if we can just get off, I will take you anywhere in Europe you want to go. It was hilarious. We went for my she should have taken me up on that offer. Yes, it was hilarious. But he, he did that strategy and it was very funny. But I think that we passed your, your limit on that one. Uh, on day one. Yes. Were, uh, <laughs> I'm yes, sorry, I had, I had to tell that one. So one thing I do, I like to, um, 
I worked in a trauma unit for a while, right? So for several years. And one thing I like to do is put things in perspective the way we used to triage or prioritize. Okay, so as a trauma nurse, you think of things as ABCs. So you prioritize things as ABCs. So airway, breathing, circulation. And that's how we think of things. If it's like when you are really, really slammed and it's chaos and, you know, if it doesn't fit into airway, breathing, circulation first, you really, like, we're not going to worry about it right now. Okay, so that's how we sort of prioritize things. Airway, breathing, circulation, we got to keep that patient alive. Bloody rags in the floor don't matter. Like, all the other stuff, the sounds, the noises, everything else. So I couldn't else. breathe on the Disney cruise. Yeah. I was having a panic attack. Right. So we had to do <laughs> CPR on you, yes. So, um, so that's how I prioritize things. And so when things are going wrong, it's like, okay, what do I do if, I, if it's chaotic and I'm feeling overwhelmed? Okay. We had the situation with my daughter recently because she's starting to freak out with all the stuff going on. She was feeling behind and overwhelmed. So I said, okay, it's time to stop. It's time to prioritize. Sometimes it feels like you can't let things go. It feels like the ABCs are a little out of control. It feels like I must do all of these things. But is that really true, right? Let's focus on airway, breathing, circulation. The bloody rags on the floor look like they're a priority. They look like you need to take care of them right now, but it's not really true. Okay, so ask yourself, is that something I really have to take care of right now or not? Can it wait? And let's focus on the things that really have to be taken care of right now. For me, that's always really helped. And I attach that to my values. So it's very simple. God, health, family. Okay, so I love you guys. I love being on live chats three times a week. Right now, I've had to back off a little bit, right? Because I have to put that in the, per, in the framework of can I do any more than what I'm doing in the moment and then we'll add back on. So I make sure I'm taking care of my community and answering questions. The live chats will come back more when I don't have people hammering my house apart. <laughs> so tearing my house apart. Hopefully that makes sense. So um, that's one of my strategies. Is there something else you do? Well, so you have the expectation things aren't going to go right. And when they don't go right, what is it I can do and what can't I do? Right. And so I try to stay focused on the positive. I try to, uh, I mean, you know, of course there are things that are, that'll irritate you, but then it's take a couple of deep breaths. What is it I can do to be helpful in this situation? And so you end up controlling things you can and letting go of things that you can't. Right. And one thing I like to do as well is try to create a quiet space. Um, not easy when you've got this much noise and chaos going on, but try to create a quiet space. So my quiet space has had to shift and move around the house quite a lot. Um, but there's, you know, if we can just make that quiet space so I can take that 10 minutes to meditate, pray, and ground myself each day. Because I know something's going to get thrown at me repeatedly during this process that's going to irritate me, right? That's going to come up that's not going to go right. You can't do this much work and have it all go perfectly. It's not going to happen. So we do these grounding techniques in meditation. We both have them. We talk a lot about them in our book, The Brain Warrior's Way. We both practice them. And that really helps. But having that quiet space is great. So um, I like to do that. And you, I know you have one you like to do. Well, I start every day with today is going to be a great day. And if you do that, as soon as your eyes open or as soon as your feet hit the floor, today is going to be a great day, your brain will begin to find why today is going to be a great day. If you think, oh my goodness, this, this is going to happen and that's not going to work out and I'm going to fight with the contractor and all of those things, then you'll find all the reasons right. that you'll feel angry, irritated, and upset. Well, and one thing that I learned from you that I really like, um, I learned this, you, you made this one statement a couple years ago and I just sort of grabbed onto it and I love it. And it's um, because, I mean, we've had a lot of things, some fairly significant things happen, but when you're doing a job this size, that happens. They put the wrong floor in, okay? So there have been some things that have been, you know, fairly stressful. Um, and I wanted to get really upset and for about an hour I did. And then I just stop and ask myself this question that I learned from you. Does it have eternal value? And it just puts things in perspective. You, know, you think about the people in Texas, or in our case, we've been helping my sister with her kids. Um, she got her kids back from Child Protective Services on Mother's Day. Yeah, that has eternal value, right? That kind of work that we're doing has eternal value. The floor, really irritating, but it doesn't have eternal value. It's not something I'm gonna be thinking no, about five years from now. But we didn't want to have a floor we didn't want. So you deal with and it. And so, in a kind way, without screaming, without yelling, 
but firm and firm kind. Firm and kind. Always remember those two words, especially if you have children or contractors. <laughs> firm and kind. And clear. That, you know, it's, it's wrong and we weren't involved in why it was wrong. You, you need to fix it. It's like, awesome. You need to fix it. Right. And so you just stay firm, but you don't get stupid. You don't get crazy. You don't get out of control. Because then you end up feeling guilty about your own behavior. And then you, you make in. a bad decision for yourself. Hey, there's a question. Our brand new Chicago clinic is going to open in the next week or two. Yeah. Uh, where will it be? It's uh, up by Highland Park in a little city called Bannockburn uh, near Deerfield. We're so excited. I was just there last week and it was gorgeous. Uh, so it's clinic number seven. It's our first clinic in the middle of the country. And then here. LA opens when? And then uh, Encino, just north of Los Angeles, is going to open probably early December. Yeah. So busy, we're, busy we're really for us. Excited. So my last, uh, my last tip on this is have grace with yourself. Like you get off track, things get busy. Um, you know, there's got to be some grace involved, and just know that you're going to get back on track. Tell yourself, I'm going to do three simple things to get back on track, and then I know that I'm going to let it go, stop being irritated with myself, and get back on track. Drink a glass of water, or go for a walk, or call a friend, or whatever it is. That's my cue to let it go and get back on track. Well, and another thing, this goes along with the, your concept of eternal value that you got from me, is uh, develop really clear goals for yourself. We have an exercise on Brain Fit Life, our online community, called the One Page Miracle. On one piece of paper, mm -hmm. write down what it is you want in your relationships, in your work, in your money, in your physical, emotional, spiritual health. What do you want? And then you ask yourself, is my behavior today getting me what I want? So it's not what you should do or you shouldn't do. It's what you want to do and is your behavior getting you what you want? So, for example, I have very clear goals for my relationship with Tana. I want a kind, caring, loving, supportive, passionate relationship. Uh, and I don't always feel like it. I always really? wanted. This is I always wanted, but you know sometimes I'll get crazy thoughts in my head, like oh you should tell her off, and that then I always go, go back to, will your behavior get you what you want? A kind, caring, loving, supportive, passionate relationship <laughs> and that thought that Probably just ran not. through your head <laughs> it's not going to get you what you want at all <laughs> so let's not do that and so it's not that i shouldn't do it although i shouldn't it's that's not the point the right. point is does it get you what you want in your relationship with your wife you with your child you. with your contractor with you know whoever uh your boss and so you want to stay conscious you want to stay clear with what you want in this situation. And then your behavior is likely to follow. I have to tell them one thing before we end this. My husband, the male model, was just written up in Vogue. <laughs> and he was also, I have to remind them, you were in, was it the New York Times? The style section. The style section of the New York As Times. I am married a to a male model. Icon. So I am the brains and he is the beauty. So <laughs> They did a whole section on <laughs> TED Talks and the most successful TED Talks of all time. And uh, between my two, I have about 5 million views. And they wanted to know about dressing yes. for success. And I always wear black on television. Uh, well, mostly because I can go to 20 cities and I don't have to check any luggage. I can do it all in carry-on. Okay, so uh, I just have to tell you the one thing I never wanted, my goal has never been to be married to a male model. But I'm married to a male model, apparently. So I just had to tell you that. I feel so happy for you. Yes, I, yeah, so. All right. So, enjoy the rest happy of your Sunday. summer. Come up with your plan. Either stay on track or get back on track and enjoy.
Take care. Bye-bye.